Well, joining us to discuss uh, the markets uh, more broadly uh, is Sylvia Jablonski, uh, Defiance ETF's Chief Investment Officer. Sylvia, very good morning to you. Uh, that topic of quantum computing perhaps isn't the top, top uh, topic uh, de jour, but why don't we just quickly touch on that because of uh, Leslie's story just there. It's a theme you like? Yeah, good morning, Wilford. It is a theme that I like, and it's actually it's actually been one of the fastest growing plays this year on the market. If you see the AUM growth in, in both the single name stocks and the quantum ETFs out there, investors have taken notice. So I think that quantum computing is really just a call option on the future of technology and on the future of computing. And it's just it's something that's coming to fruition now, right? So you have quantum computers that are becoming more commercialized. They're starting to make advancements in material science and drug discovery and aerospace and defense. You have government spending going into the space. You have a race in quantum computing between the US, China, and Europe. And you know, the new story that you just announced now between IBM, one of the leaders in quantum computing and AMD just tells us that there's more CapEx going into this space. So it's it's a good path for the future of computing. Um, spin us back to, to the story we were talking about at the top of the show with Steve Leisman and, and uh, the president trying to fire Lisa Cook. Is, is this a, a worry for equities or a good thing for equities? Well, I, I think Steve, Steve Leisman actually put it well that, you know, that your next guests that are going to come on the show are probably going to stick to their, their script of invest, 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 right? And so I think that while this is a risk to the market, when you, when you talk about the Fed becoming politicized and some of these outside forces that can impact the market, um, you know, I think investors will keep an eye on it. So, for example, the way that they'll do that is if anything changes in terms of the Fed's rate cut path. So if we don't get that cut in September, if we don't get the you know few cuts that the market is expecting and there's any kind of change in timing or, or quantity of cuts, I think that pulls the market back. But overall, I think that the market is, is in line with the idea that you know the Fed sounded a little bit more dovish at Jackson Hole, that there will be cuts. And so for investors, that tends to be a path, at least in the short term, of, of looking to the market to invest. And what you saw was, was kind of that you know, rip after he came out with the more dovish speech. But you know, to Steve Leeson's point, there, there is a, a macro issue here about you know, what do we sort of want in terms of balance of powers here. But it's not really impacting the market today. Um, what's your scorecard on the, the mega cap tech names' is earnings thus far and uh, your expectations for NVIDIA? So I think I think what's been great is that this earnings, you know, this earnings season delivered really, right? S and P earnings were up ten percent year over year. Nasdaq up over thirty percent year over year, and the mega caps were were leaders, and and there was a good amount of capex, particularly in things like AI, and that bodes well for the future of the AI trade. In terms of Nvidia specifically, you know, that's really the heartbeat of AI and arguably the market, right? So whatever happens with Nvidia tonight, I think will impact. Um, you know, hyperscalers, cybersecurity, AI, chips, data centers, cloud, you know, all aspects of technology. Uh, the bar is high, right? We're looking for over 50% in revenues. We're looking for close to 50% in EPS growth. And so uh, it's going to be tough if there's if there's a miss and, and you might see, you know, a pullback on that. But I think if they meet expectations, the, the stock will continue its its way onward. And what will be really important is to hear what Jensen Wong says about GPUs, adoption, you know, continued issues between the U.S. and China and tariffs, things like this. Um, but overall, it's just a company that has had more supply than than demand. And that's a good spot to be. So long term, I think it'll be a stock that people are still interested in, regardless of what happens today. Sylvia, how do you square some of these mega themes, whether it's AI or quantum computing or spending on defense, with where valuations stand right now? Uh, what advice do you have for investors in terms of just short term versus long term as they assess some of these bigger themes? Yeah, so I think investors have a lot of the uh, mega caps in their portfolios already, right? And I think that it's for long term investors, it's always good to hold on to those. You know, it's, it's a long game with investing, right? Um, in terms of the new themes, though, I just think that there are new opportunities and new pockets to explore. So, for example, AI power and infrastructure is a good theme. We were talking about NVIDIA. And while you need you know, infrastructure companies like NVIDIA, Microsoft, Palantir in the, in the AI space, you also need power. You need like the GE, Vernovas, the Camcos, um, the Vistras, things like this. We're, we're, we're thinking that um, you know, some of this AI applications will take double digit power in the next decade. And so you can expand that trade and look to some of those types of names or ETFs in those spaces. 
And then I, I think that there's other parts of technology that we don't talk about as much, like modern warfare, for example, right? We have conflicts in the Middle East. We have conflicts in Ukraine. Um, government spending is, is I think, about, um, uh, you know, $850 billion or so was the last aerospace and defense contract. And so when you think about the new modern warfare, we're talking about drones and satellites, you know, the Kratos, the Jobies, the, the aero environments of, of, of the world. And so I think that there are places to again, take call options on the future of technology and, you know, quantum AI power and modern warfare are three areas to look at.